Um, we have one more draw. So it's the, we want to say thank you to our prize sponsor, One Trust. Um, next up, one lucky winner will receive a $200 Amazon gift card. And the winner of this prize is Melissa Wood Woodward with the Western Media Group. So congratulations, Melissa, and um, we'll be in touch with you for you to claim your prize. Um, I, we have an upcoming session now with a panel of CMPs, but I want to remind you to please stick around after this because we have a great um, social scene for you to access. It's a, we've got some really cool new software we're using and we'd love for you to check it out and say hi to some people because you've been sitting for a while. So stay tuned for that. Um, and now let's get into it. So consent management platforms we've been talking a lot about them today they've been coming up throughout all of the um, conversations and they are an essential tool that allow publishers and brands to communicate their privacy practices more openly while giving consumers enhanced control over their privacy preferences this key element of the ecosystem also links consumer choice to the ad tech universe. So with that said, I'm excited to be joined by represent representatives from three CMPs, all of them IAB Canada members, who are here to have a discussion on the rise of CMPs in Europe and why we should be paying attention to this important piece of ad tech here in Canada. With me today, I have Heinz Bauman, Head of Product, Privacy and Identity at Quantcast, Arshdeep Sood, Marketing Solutions Engineer at OneTrust, and Jan Winkler, CEO of Consent Manager. So welcome everyone. And thank you so much for, um, for joining me today. I've loved getting to know all of you over the past few months and I'm excited to fire some questions at you and can't wait to hear what you have to say. So first question, I'm gonna go to Heinz first with this one, but um, here it is. So we have all seen the cookie banner asking, asking for user consent. And I think that this is what many of us think of when we hear the CMP acronym. Knowing that there is way more to your business than just the pop-up, can you tell me a little bit more about your big picture overall service, service offering? So what can partners expect to receive from the relationship with you? Sure, well, first of all, thank you for inviting me here and uh, welcome uh, everybody to this panel. Um, so I thought about this quite a bit, and uh, I think I want to start first off with kind of an overview of, of Quantcast and the leadership that uh, we played in the CMP world. Uh, so I was one of the initiators of the TCF and the CMPs. Uh, in, I think this was in summer 2017, I got carried into an IAB Europe meeting uh, where industry solutions regarding GDPR and e-privacy were de debated. And after that, we did a prototype, uh, which then became the TCF and um, uh, built our first CMP uh, to collect consent from users. Uh, we launched, we launched uh, as an open source project first, and then later on, we created a commercial version uh, that is now known under the name Choice. All that said, Quantcast's main business is a sizable DSP for the open internet. Uh, so we've been in the business for over 15 years. We have we care about our clients very much. Uh, that's advertisers and publishers alike. Uh, so if you combine that knowledge that we have in advertising industry and add the commitment we have around privacy, that gives us a strong kind of, we, we see ourselves as strong partners for all our advertisers and publishers when it comes to implementing a solution for the different privacy laws. So when you come to kind of looking at the offering we have of choice, what you get, so uh, choice is a self-serve solution that provides a highly customizable CMP uh, that allows marketers and publishers to adjust to the style of the audience of their web page. Uh, customization is done through a web portal that we have. And the web portal also uh, contains um, uh, access to the audit logs and uh, an analytics piece to get the analytics information about the consent. Um, so we're supporting CCPA, GDPR, and whatever else is on the horizon. <laughs> and um, we have for larger clients uh, a managed service on top of this uh, so that they get more handholding and extra uh, services. 
That's great. It sounds like you guys are doing a lot and you're busy. So Arshdeep, what about you? What, <laughs> um, what can you tell me about OneTrust? Absolutely. So hey, everyone, Arshdeep Sood. I uh, represent the marketing side of things for OneTrust offerings, but in general, OneTrust is a privacy security and moving forward more of like a trust solution. So we have had some great conversation about how third party cookies are going away, how we have uh, people thinking of leveraging first party data, how we can understand if you already do different things like that within our organization. So with our solution, our offerings are spread across the board for across business units. So be it generating a data map that you are thinking about to understand internal data governance, be it uh, managing any privacy requests that come your way. So we are talking about the data deletion requests, the access requests, any of those. And then in general, your consumer interfaces, uh, you have anonymous users coming to your web browser. So as a CMP solution, we help manage those opt-outs, opt-ins, maybe just to notice only to get them acclimatized to um, a banner is something we have. But then if we are thinking about first party data capture, how can we scale that user journey from an anonymous user to a known authenticated user, and then take that downstream to fill our CRMs and make sure our campaigns are well-informed. So I would say all in all our services, expansive and holistic to support not just the internal governance pieces, but also consumers experience throughout. And I'm really excited about this panel because I have personally worked a lot on the CCP and GDPR use cases. So you, you might see me just go on and on. So. Uh, really be, be my guest be my guest um Jan do you have anything to add there um a bit I mean the in, in a sense I mean we're all doing kind of the same if, if, if you break it down yeah I mean we're all cookie banner solutions um we see our product so to say a bit three pieces so to say the one is the compliance piece um making your website compliant having this cookie banner on the page uh, having compliant texts etc everything that belongs to this stuff um then the second piece is uh, the crawling um we have a crawler that will visit your website and tell you which kind of vendors you have there which kind of cookies uh, they set etc so that you can actually do your compliance only if you know which vendors you're using only then you can you know inform the user etc so that's the second part and the third part that we focus on is um, basically analytics and optimization, meaning um, it's not done with just, you know, putting a cookie banner on the page. Um, you you want to improve the, 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 the experience of the user, et cetera. And so in most cases, the clients... Uh, first of all, they want to know what's happening. So they need analytics, they would need reports, you know, how many users clicked on accept, reject, et cetera. What did the users do? And then how can we improve? So we have um, A-B testing integrated and machine learning that will optimize designs, et cetera. So that at the end you get higher acceptance rates, you get lower bounce rates, et cetera. Uh, so that's the, the third, um, how you say, the third pillar, so to say, in our construct. Um, yeah, so that's kind of our product <laughs> yeah that's it we are going to go into that a little bit more later on but i do love that piece of it all it's it's fun right the science of, of consent so now that we have got a little baseline for what you guys are all doing let's go back in time a little bit so the cmp landscape as you're all well aware grew exponentially with the passing of the gdpr as we we're potentially moving into new privacy landscape here in canada i would love to know what that time was like when the GDPR first came into play. So was it utter chaos? Was there consumer business backlash? And in the end, did everyone survive and adapt? So why don't we start with Jan here? Because you are our, our, our European guest mm -hmm. today. So let's start with you. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, from a European perspective, I think it was the same in, in the US or in Canada, probably, at least for the ones, uh, you know, the websites or the publishers that needed to deal with, the, with these issues. Um, the beginning was... Um, a lot of, um, let's say, insecurity, or people did not know what's, you know, what to do. Actually, it was a long, long time that, uh, especially publishers and advertisers, um, you know, waited and checked what you know, what is my my competition doing? Do I also need to add this cookie banner to my website? Um, so there was a long time of waiting. Uh, and only slowly, uh, basically, publishers and, and uh, websites and shops, et cetera, picked up. Um, chaos, 
I wouldn't say chaos, but you know, confusion. Uh, let's say it this way. Um, it, it's it's now much much better, so to say. I mean, we have three years now. It's <laughs> people kind of know now what's what they should do. We're still not at hundred percent. I mean, there's still a lot of website that, um, let's say, have room to improve. Uh, but I mean, compared to when we started, it's it's much 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 better now. Yeah. What about you, Arshdeep? Would you have anything to add there? I would echo what Jan said there. Uh, it wasn't necessarily chaos going into 2018. People who are already kind of aware of what the requirements are have gone through the regulation. It's pretty directive. It says affirmative actions. You need to have a banner or some sort of an interface that gives user the full disclosure. So who had that scale and enterprise were pre-prepared to go into it. It turned into chaos about, I would say, March, April, May, when everybody was like, okay, we're hitting the deadline, we might be fine. And then after the people started hearing about the fines or actually like attorney generals being like, I am looking at you, that <laughs> just erupted. It was like, okay, we need your support. So I would say that's how the trends work. But I would definitely say over the past three years, people have gotten used to it. Data privacy has become such a topic in general, um, even though I work for an organization who is providing privacy as a solution, as a consumer, I have become more aware because now iOS uh, and other devices, Google, third-party cookies going away. It's, it's the news. It's the talk of the town. Everybody uses these platforms. So as consumers get aware, they have these expectations that as providers or solutions out there, as organizations, you would give me that disclosure, give me my rights to opt in or or opt out of something. So over three years, I've seen people just getting so much better used to it. And even opt-in rates have significantly gone up to what you would have seen in 2018 to what you see today in 2021 without A-B testing as well. But now people are A-B testing just to like start out with great success. That's great to hear. And Heinz, do you have any, any tidbits to add on to that? Yeah, I can just echo what was said. I think there was... I think people were quite nervous at the beginning across the industry because as Jan said, there was no solution. What are we going to do? I think thankfully, I think under the leadership of ID Europe, we actually figured out a solution and we put TCF in place and we created CMPs and then we, there was something there. But also I think to, to um, echo this, another third point that I think uh, Ian said was the adoption was rather slow at the very beginning. You mm -hmm. know, when if you look at our curve, that when we had the solution out, the first one out, and how many people were actually, you know, people are interested, but to, to pick it up, it was very flat. And then comes the May, where the deadline was the 25th, and it just skyrocketed up. Because suddenly everybody, shit, I need to have something, right? Uh, I think the, the good news for everybody here in the audience in Canada is that today we have a, a standard how to do this with TCF V2. It's very strong, healthy, widely adopted uh, across the industry. So this is a very good place. There's 100 and I think 60 different CMPs out there, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. So many, many of these CMPs available. They take care of whenever a change happens to the framework that this happened, that they put this in. So it's a no-brainer for the, or almost a no-brainer for the publishers and the advertisers who need to have a CMP. So I think it's a, it's a good position to be in three years later. Um, from That's where we, we were when we saying. started. We keep saying to our members, you know, now's the time, right? Like, don't, <laughs> don't be like Europe, but, but we're, we're getting there. So this is the point <laughs> of the conversation today. So we know that consumers want more control over their consent and new laws like GDPR and CCPA and our potential CPPA give them that. But we also know that people don't like pop-ups and there's a disdain for the opt-in process. So how long would you say that it takes for consumers to get comfortable with this? Did you see a change in opt-in rates from year over year, like from year one to year three? And did people sort of get used to it? Who wants to start? Let's start with Arshdeep. You go ahead on this one. Okay, for sure. So I have definitely seen things turn for the better over the years. Um, people who were prepared for GDPR had a much easier time for CCPA, especially because it offered the opt-out process for sale of versa information. So everybody loved it. Um, having said that, you would notice that with Apple itself, when they said that, hey, we will 
like we need people to say yes to these uh, these banners or the device settings that come through. There was about the last I read was there was about a four percent opt in rate there versus an eleven percent in EU. So we already see that people in the EU are more comfortable because they know there there's a value exchange added to it. And going back to what the previous panel was all about that, hey, if you can give them the right disclosure, if you can give them the value add of, if you'd give me that consent, if you give me that first party data or whatever be it, we are going to provide you with a personalized user journey. So if I'm looking to buy something for my mother on Mother's Day and I'm searching for it, I would rather get some options over the internet to be able to see what's the cheapest thing, but at the same time, what looks really expensive for her to really like it. So um, <laughs> it, it really benefits when, content gets personalized to consumers. And we would see that if you are being open, transparent, and really just putting out their disclosure, it has helped a lot of customers. So year one through year three, people coming in, I have seen a lot of customers of ours just say, even though there is a opt-in mechanism defined as an affirmative action in EU, we want to have that as a global standard because mm -hmm. they just like it. They think it's easier to maintain and it's the best way to build that loyal customer base because they know we give you the power, we care about you and you get to pick. Um, similarly for CCPA, I saw that even though it's very California directive and you could geo-target it, people are doing it for entirety of United States because they're like, we don't want to differentiate, we'll do it for everyone. And all of these experiences, you can always like customize it to the language, you can change the jargons that go in, make it as easy to understand. It doesn't have to be like a 10 page privacy policy, just like we care about you, Here's what we will drop and here's why we would do it. And it's for you, it, it works out uh, for the better for everyone. That's great. Um, Heinz, do you have anything to add there? Um, well, I think it's it's similar here, what, I, what, what we see, um, you know, at the end of the day, the, the consumer doesn't really have a choice. They need to, they see the pop-ups, they need to do something. Uh, I had a funny quote I got uh, a while back from uh, the head of programmatic of an online gaming website in the UK. And he said his customer, they all hate the cookie pop-ups. Can you do something about this today if they're not showing up? And then he said, you know, the good thing is that his users all developed a new DNA, which is the moving the finger fast enough to the OK or accept button to get rid of it. Um, I think that is uh, kind of what people do when you ask around Every meeting that I am, whether it's business or non-business, that something comes up like a cookie banner, everybody says the same word. Why are they there? And they know quickly go and dismiss it. Um, what we observed is um, over time, I think I agree what was said. We see kind of a, a, an average of 85 plus percent uh, consent rate, sometimes as high than 98, depending on the page. And the other interesting thing is looking at kind of the age demographics uh, when uh, people are more concerned about privacy laws, it's kind of more in the older generation, 40 years and up. Uh, they are more cautious about this and then we see a, a, a higher opt-out rate on pages that serve that kind of the, uh, um, demographics versus if you go to pages that are more targets to his younger generation, you have an opt-in an opt-in rate to you know in the 90s or higher 90s that's amazing that's really interesting um jan do you have any any little interesting findings there that you that you saw over your career the all findings oh yeah it's basically what the <laughs> other two said so uh, we see the same um it started not low but lower than today uh, we see a, a, a constant increase in, in acceptance rates, even you know, on even if we just look at the same website, we see that the users you know get used to the the, the consent layer. Um, the overall acceptance rate is is increasing. Um, so yeah, users get used to it. Um, what we also see is um, users tend to get quicker with it. So it doesn't take them too much, so much time to find the right button. Uh, it might be a design thing. It might be a thing that they just learned. Okay, that's the button. And you know, the, the layers kind of look all, all look similar. Um, so the, the users get used to it and the, the acceptance increases. Um, and we, we think it will continue the same way. And it will probably, in regards to Canada, it will probably be the same way in Canada. 
at the beginning, users need to, you know, check out what is this layer, what does it do, what do I need to click, which button is which. Um, but after a while, the users will just learn, and and yeah, you will have the same the same results, so to say, as in Europe. I mean, here, so so the next one thing I want to know. So we're waiting here, right? And we we are waiting to see if this legislation is going to pass. And if it passes, we are moving more towards an opt-in regime, which will, you know basically mimic what we've we've had seen in Europe. So in the meantime, though, while we're sitting around waiting and the browsers are starting to change their own requirements and consumer trust and confidence is at a really, you know, all time low. What do you think, like, what's the one thing that you think businesses here in Canada should do now in the absence of that new law? Like, should they start putting a, a CMP on their sites and start getting people used to that, that process, even though it's not a requirement? Or, or what do you think? What do you think we should be doing? So let's start with Heinz. Um, well, one thing you, you should not do is, is, is panic, uh, I think. Um, as as you know, we, we talked earlier about, uh, we have an, a, a very established uh, data privacy market with many CMPs and uh, widely adopted standards uh, with the TCF. So I think it's familiarizing with what's out in the market. Uh, I would, uh, you know, probably I would suggest that companies who need to look at this, it's just looking at what's out there. What are the strengths of all the different companies to be prepared for this? Now you can't, you know, you can't really put it in for Canada because you don't have the law yet and we don't have a CMP that will serve that specific jurisdiction, but you can still take a look at and inform yourself who are the ad companies to actually do, what do they do? You know, I have, I have these, I'm working with these partners as a publisher. So are they all, you know, are they, are they compliant with, you know, like GDPR or, or, or CCPA that's already existing and talking to the partners? And then looking at the different CMPs that are out there and see which is the strongest that I need for my needs that I have. Do I need a quick solution? Do I have a complicated integration? I need a handholding. I need, I need more managed service. Uh, do I need extra things? I know everything that's all there, so I can have a self-serve more to versus I need a, to I need a partner for the CMP that can scan my site and figure this all out for me. And then make these choices up ahead of time. Mm -hmm. What about what about you, Arshdeep? What do you think? I definitely agree with Heinz there. Um, I would highly recommend people to be proactive. Um, like the entire discussion today happened, it's it's not that all, with all the changes happening in the regulation, it's not an inevitable thing. It's going to happen. Be it twenty two three or sometime late later than that, it is bound to happen. So just getting yourself familiar with what this is, why this is, why does it matter to me would be stage one. Understanding what value is this regulation actually trying to add to consumer and businesses? How can I potentially turn this into a, a relationship building mechanism that when you come to my page, it's all about you and me and how I can provide you a value add then maybe I'll take value out of you. Um, so once you have that understanding, then I would highly recommend considering getting your consumers just used to the fact that there would potentially be a pop-up if there's going to be a pop-up. Now, um, like, like we have already discussed, over year one to year three with GDPR, people are actually opting in. They really like clicking on the accept all. Um, and I, IABTCF is very particular about all their policies. So they, they are familiar with what they're going to see, what it's going to mean. So their tendency to say yes also increases because they see the value exchange coming out. So just getting used to that, uh, it could be a bare minimum notice only banner that pops up. And if people continue interacting with the page, it goes away. So it's not necessarily hindering the user experience, but you're just kind of giving them the subtle cues that, hey, you might see something like this on my page. So by the time you roll something out that's more prominent, more persistent on your page, six months down the line, they're already used to something and it's like not, oh my God, what, what just showed up on my page. And then um, earlier, like Jan mentioned that you could A-B test. Mm -hmm. Think about strategies of, I'll start out with, just deploying something, get people used to a banner. But if people are opting in, maybe now let's experiment with, do they like a particular style? Do they like a pop-up persistent versus pop-up implicit EDC? So it, there's a lot of mechanisms once you get into it, but to, to boil this down again, or to summarize, start with understanding the regulation and why it's important, get familiar internally um, and just 
like Heinz mentioned, a scan, understanding what your tracking technologies are and thinking of the user journey upfront is going to really, really help you out in the long-term strategy. And a lot of users for GDPR have benefited um, from that because CCPA became super easy and organizations who are now moving into CPP are also going to be really comfortable with that because it's a global experience. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. I think people, I'm, I'm going to do your sales pitch for you, but like, I think people really, businesses really need to start speaking to CMPs and really understanding what they can do and that it's not that scary and it's not going to kill your business. It, it could actually help in the long run. Um, Jan, I'm going to give you the, the positive question. I have one question left. We're, we're just, on time. just one Unless thing. To have, add. Go ahead. Yeah, just one thing. Um, especially for the Canadians, my recommendation would be to actually start with a CMP because I mean, every website at least has like three European visitors. So you could already test a bit and, you know, put your feet in the water um, just to, you know, get used to how it works, how to implement the stuff, et cetera. Because I mean, um, there is clients out there that, you know, just take the code, put it in and everything is done in an hour. Uh, but I mean, we also have, uh, clients, big enterprises where you have multiple levels of, you know, decisions, et cetera, that take time. And then you don't want to end up in a, at a situation where you must have it implemented, but you can't implement because there's so much, you know, decisions to do, et cetera. So um, start the process early. And as I said, maybe test with, with the Europeans that you have on your website or test with the uh, uh, Californians, et cetera. So there is, there is a way to, to, to try it before. Yeah. Oh, that's a really, that's a really, um, really good point. I, I agree, but I'm still going to give you the happy questions. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> um, so we're going to try and end this on a positive note, because it seems like for a lot of people in, in the audience, this is not a topic that they necessarily want to accept as a reality, right? The, the whole moving into opt-in or changing, changing the way we do things. But so many of the people here are fearful or apprehensive but we want to end on a high note. So can you share some of the positive side effects of integrating a CMP into your business and what can we actually look forward to? <laughs> uh, yeah, positive things. I mean, uh, at the end, it, I mean, there will definitely be negative things. Let's, let's be honest. I mean, there, is, there, there will be less data, there will be costs. Uh, um, but I mean, at the end, the positive side is, um, user trust. Uh, I think uh, um, Ashib said it. Um, uh, the data that you get is more uh, trustworthy. Users are more tr uh, trusting your website more. Um, users are more happy and satisfied to give their data. Um, so the quality of the data um, can increase or will increase. Um, and I mean, at the end, that's a good thing. Um, you will also, what you, I mean, it's more a technical thing. What you will see is uh, a lot of robot and fake traffic. You will no longer see in your data. <laughs> it's a bit of a side, you know, side effect um, because usually robots don't click on accept. Um, <laughs> so these kind of things, there's, there's happy things to it. Um, so it's not all bad, let's say it this way. Well, mm -hmm. That's good. I'm going to give both Heinz and um, Arshdi 30 seconds each to give me a, give me a positive. So let's start with Heinz. I would just agree with the trust. Uh, you know, you show that you take privacy seriously, and everybody, every of your users that come to the page, you you treat them properly, and that builds trust. They may come then more often to your page. More often to your page may mean more more ads being shown, meaning you get more revenue. And our steep. Absolutely spot on there. Um, trust is the biggest benefit of integrating any CMP. And going with the CMP solution out there in the market, the benefits you get is it's tried and tested in different markets. We, there's IAB pre-built integrations that's part of this process. And along those lines, when you think about different regulations or audiences, you might have French fluent audiences versus English or any other native language. There's all pre-built translations, uh, part of those solutions. So the heavy lifting of what it should look like or what should we be doing or do we need to pull in IP or do we need to pull in legal or do we need to now sit and understand the entire IP policy to make a compliant banner? Well, we've got you covered there. So integrating with the CMP is going to just make things easier and all you have to care about is your strategy going in that this is the user journey and these are the results we are looking for. So let's work together to get that. Yeah, that's a really great point. I know that you know we're developing the policies here for Canada and I know that we would just 
you know, have them in play and the CMPs would just make sure that that's like they were put into action, right? It's, it's really good. And, the, and you really help um, organizations be compliant. So it's really, really great. Um, this was a great conversation. We could talk all day, I'm sure, but the day is coming close to an end. Um, I do want to remind our members that we have worked with the CMP members and we have created a guide to CMPs as well as we have recordings with all of the CMP members um, where they go through specific details uh, around their, their specific products. So we do invite you to go to our resource um, section in our site and check that out as you start to move forward in this process. So thank you all for joining me. I really appreciate it. And thank you for staying up late or getting up early. Everyone's in a different time zone here. So I really do appreciate your, your participation. Um, so before we get to the social part of the day, which I don't want any of you to leave before that happens, because it's going to be really fun, I would like to um, thank our, um, our sponsors again. So thank you to the Globe and Mail, our elite corporate sponsor, as well as our prize sponsors, One Trust and Samsung ads and teeds. And just a reminder that the recordings of, of all the sessions today will be shared to you via email in the coming days. And I also would like to encourage you all to join us for our next event, our digital for reach event, where we will be discussing how brands can achieve meaningful digital reach in 2021. So we will be carrying on the conversation in, in a lot of respects. The event will take place from July 7th from one to three, followed by some networking. And for anyone who's here today who is not currently an IEB Canada member, if you want to um, join our community, please reach out to memberships at ibcanada.com as we would love to have you, have you join us. So now we are going to invite you to join us for some cross-country networking where we hope you will see some old friends and meet some new ones. So you have to open up Google Chrome, very important. The link is in the chat. Melanie has put it there. And if you can click on that link, turn on your camera and mic and create your bubble and drag it over and meet some friends and have a great time. Um, it's really cool. We hope you check it out and we can't wait to see you there. I'm going to go over there right now. So thanks for a great day and we'll see you in the park.